In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this mesh wreath with a Dollar Tree frame. But hey, if this is your first time joining us, my name is Stephanie Williams, and I am owner of Festive Creations by Stephanie, where we inspire and mentor others as well as design beautiful things for your home. So welcome, welcome. Get right in to it with this roll of 10 inch mesh. It is 10 yards long and we're going to put it into my mesh holder, which if you want to know more about that, you can find more information in the description. We're going to cut our 10 inch mesh into 18 to 20 inch strips using our Dollar Tree frame. We're going to create this wreath. Now, the reason I say 18 to 20 inch, because each roll of mesh varies. So I know for a fact that if you stay between those measurements, that you will be able to do this with one roll of mesh. That's exciting just in itself. Now we're going to add some pipe cleaners or chenille stems to our Dollar Tree frame. We're going to add a total of 18 pipe cleaners, but I start at the crossbar and you'll notice that I'm adding it to the two outer rings of the Dollar Tree frame. So I'm twisting that and keeping it snug next to the frame. And then I always put a spot of hot glue to hold it in place. And this will become critical to avoid um, your mesh from shifting once you've added your mesh. Add the pipe cleaners to the joints first on the outer frame. Once you've completed the entire outer frame, we'll go back and show you how to add the remainder. This should be a total of 12 pipe cleaners when we get done with the bottom ring on the outer frame. Now that we've added them at the joint, we're going to go in the center of the two pipe cleaners that we just did, still working with the outer rim. So go in between the two that are at the joint and add a center one all the way around the outer ring. Once again, just a reminder to glue each one down. It only takes a little spot of glue. On the top row, we're going to add the pipe cleaners again at the joint, but we're only going to add six pipe cleaners around the top. You should now have a completed frame with 18 pipe cleaners. That tells you you are on the right track. And here's our finished frame with all the pipe cleaners added. Now we're going to start adding our mesh. You'll notice that I am curling one end of the mesh slightly inward. Then I'm going to the opposite end of that strip of mesh and curling it in. Then right down the center, we're going to kind of pinch it together or ruffle it together. And we're going to pinch that in the center, holding on to it. Once we've got our curls, we're going to place that inside one of our pipe cleaners on the frame. Curl side up, by the way. You'll notice that we're placing it horizontally on the frame and I'm only giving it one or two twists with the pipe cleaners. We're going to repeat this process by curling just a small amount of the ends, maybe two curls in on each end. And by the way, it does help sometimes to have something weighted down, especially when you get to the end of the roll of mesh. So just a couple of curls inward. I flip it back around and curl the other side and then before we scrunch it in the center 
we now have our curls. Add curls to all 18 of your pipe cleaners. <clears throat> you can start with the top or the bottom row. I started with the top row on this wreath, but there is no right or wrong. Do what works for you and take your time with it. Some people actually use clothespins to hold on to the end of the curls while they're working on the other side. I'm able to, to typically hold on to it with my fingers and manage both, but not everybody can. So I want to give you that little helpful hint. Come on back when we get all 18 curls added. Your wreath frame should now look very similar to the one that I'm holding up for placement. So let's move on to the next step. And we're going to take two one and a half inch ribbons and cut six tails, ribbon tails, of each color. So your ribbon tails are going to be 13 inches long and we need six of each color. Once you've cut your ribbon tails, stack them together, two different ribbons together, pinch it in the center after you find your center point and add it to the top row only. We're only adding ribbon tails to the top row of this Dollar Tree wreath frame. Let's repeat that process all the way around the top row. So we should have a total of six ribbon tail bundles when we get completed here. Here's our finished wreath frame with our ribbon tails added to the top row only. Now, let's go ahead and attach our sign. My signs that I typically use will accommodate a quarter inch staple. If you're not sure, please do not use a staple gun on your sign. So I attach pipe cleaners with the staple gun where it's going to attach to the wire frame. Then I add hot glue over the staples as an extra security blanket so that I know my sign will stay well attached. Once you've added your pipe cleaners, now we're going to attach it to our wire frame. This design that we're that I'm showing you can be used with any color ribbon, any color mesh, any sign. It's kind of my formula for um, making a wreath using a Dollar Tree frame. Before you get real ahead of yourself, make sure that the sign is attached to the wire frame securely before you trim off any excess pipe cleaners. Now, everybody's favorite, let's make two bows. I'm actually going to demonstrate one because we're going to make two of the same exact bows. So at first, I start out by dovetailing my ribbon. And on this particular bow, I'm not making super long tails. So I have about five inches of ribbon tail here, inserting my one and a half inch ribbon into my easy bow maker which you can also find in our store or in the description. <clears throat> then I take my wired ribbon and measure out to the five inch mark on the Easy Bow Maker, twist and make my first loop. I'm gonna do that on the opposite side, five, the, find the five inch mark, give my ribbon a twist, and now we have two five inch loops, one on each side. I'm gonna repeat that 
with our ribbon and do five inch loops for our first color. One more time, we're going to do, um, make a five inch loop, give it a twist, and do another five loop, five inch loop on the other side. So we're going to have a total of three five inch loops on each side. Now we're going to measure that off to about five inches and trim off our first ribbon. On the second ribbon that we use for this bow, we're going to use the blue stars and we're going to start out the same exact way. So you'll notice on the bow that or the ribbon that we currently have, we have the loops kind of spread out. We have three on each side and one tail on each side. You um, might want to go ahead and dovetail that now, or if you want to come back and do it after your bow is completed, that's purely up to you. So adding our second ribbon is going to begin the same exact way. We're going to dovetail an end. We're going to give it about a five inch tail, give it a twist and push it down into our easy bow maker. This ribbon tail though, however, is going to be just about an inch shorter than our first ribbon. So we're going to be able to see the red ribbon underneath the blue ribbon. So the loops are going to be just a, a, a tad bit shorter and anywhere from an inch, half inch, between half inch to an inch shorter so that you can see the ribbon behind it. There is no specific formula with how many loops you make. It's a personal preference. I make some bows with two loops on the bottom on the first ribbon, three on the second ribbon, two again. So a formula being three loops, two loops, three loops, or you know what? You can do four loops, three loops, two loops with each changing ribbon. It's going to be your desired outcome and um, what type of ribbon you're working with. But for this one, we added three loops of the blue. So now we have three of the red on each side and three of the blue on each side. All right, we're ready to add our third ribbon. Starting out the same way, I'm going to dovetail the edge, give it a, about a five inch tail, give it a twist, push it down in the center. I'm going to do one loop on one side another loop on the other side. Both of these loops are a little bit shorter than the blue ribbon. And then I'm going to do one more loop. This, this one is a third loop, but it's shorter. So it's only about an inch. And so the white ribbon has about four inches on one side, four inches on the other side, and one additional loop that is going to be about an inch tall. This is going to give you an extra loop in the center. Now, personal preference on what you use to attach your bow, but in this demonstration, I'm going to use a pipe cleaner and I'm going to place it on my ribbon and lift it up and attach my pipe cleaner to my bow. Then I'll be able to use that pipe cleaner then to attach it to our wreath frame. You can also use zip ties, floral wire, personal preference, y'all, whatever works for you. Once we get our bow situated and fluffed out, we'll be ready to attach it to a wreath. Don't forget, for this wreath, you will want two bows exactly the same as the one we just completed. When you attach your bow to your wreath frame, my first bow, I'm placing 
on the top right. So the goal for when we add our bows is to have a triangle shape when we're done with the focal points. So in this case, the cross is a focal point. The top right bow is a focal point, And now the bottom right bow is a focal point. So I'm making a triangular pattern with my three focal points. And when you attach your bow, you don't want to pull it so tight that it sucks your bold bow down into your mesh. You want it to sit firmly, but not pulled so taut against your frame that it distorts your bow. For some finishing touches, I use a dowel rod or maybe even a pencil and I take the pipe cleaners that we originally attached to the Dollar Tree frame and I curl them up and snugly place them next to the ribbon. So I don't have these crazy wiry fingers showing. This is what our finished product looks like. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I can't wait to see you again.